What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here back on a sassy Tuesday, 11 a.m. PST, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. British Standard Time, and 9 p.m. straight out of Kuwait. That's right. We're all over the place because we're on the Internet. That means we are global. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, before we get into the show, uh, next Wednesday, September 27th, we are hosting another movie night at the Arclight in Hollywood. That's right. It's Mark Ellis' favorite movie where he stars as Michael J. Fox as... Marty McFly inside of a movie called Back to the Future. 7.30 p.m. The Arclight. A bunch of us will be there. I, unfortunately, will be missing again uh, as I will be up north getting ready for my pending nuptials to a lovely girl who somehow agreed to marry me. Super excited about it. Also super excited about the people here today. The lovely Grace Hancock back for more. Fresh off her, fresh off oh. her Emmy's appearance. Hello. Hello, em all. The Emmy's Thank show you for having me. Clutter. Thank you. That's it. Guys, hello. Welcome to Sassy Tuesday. It's also Talk Like a Pirate Day, so get on that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it is that's... Grace Hancock. You better send in them Twitter questions. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to hashtag it something? <laughs> I like this is like Scooby-Doo as a pirate. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, at Mrs. Grace Face, hashtag Collider TV Talk, hashtag Ginger Mother of Dragons. And I didn't hear you be talking like a pirate. Oh. Now, David, I'm sending it over to Ginger. you. Our Mother black of sales regular over there, David Graban. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go there, but uh, it is another great British breakdown today. And I'm a little disappointed because I don't think my fellow TV talk companions uh, embraced <laughs> the great British breakdown as much as I did. Uh, I we'll always we'll, embrace it. We're, we're, we're going to talk about that. I a didn't little throw my later computer. On in the show. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we got yeah. a packed show for you guys here today. Super excited <laughs> to get into it. Again, before I let you uh, go, there's something serious I want to say. <laughs> this I'm talk like a pirate day. Uh, and just Instagram and Twitter told us that, so I'm going to keep doing it at random times throughout the show. All right, let's get into the first one. Grace, what's up? All right, so yesterday a new 30-second POV teaser was dropped for The Punisher on Netflix. Uh, John Bernthal has described this as the most <laughs> violent series ever produced by Marvel TV, and here we can definitely see why. Great um, graphic. Really. <laughs> it's <laughs> it kind of looks like my grandma father taking a selfie just like <laughs> it's like your grandfather meets Blair Witch he's just all up it's, in that camera woo um, yeah so this 30 is, looks, seconds yeah super brutal really dark I'm really thrilled for this I, this looks like it's gonna be angsty as hell and Real I'm so angsty. into it and I love anti-heroism is that a thing yeah. yes um, like that gray area is just like endlessly. I, so I'm I'm thrilled right I, I I love the stabbing I love the POV I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> what did I say that um, I I love that this is going to be violent in the sense of that's what Punisher is. That's yeah. what the things are. Right. But stuff like this, I really hope that there are intermittent POV camera, soldier camera kind yeah. of stuff. Because I like that. I think that adds something to it. As long as it's not hardcore Henry. I thought I liked hardcore Henry. It was just, it took me out of a little bit, mostly because I hate first person shooter video games. I stopped playing video oh. games when you started going like this. When you stopped going like this, like once it stopped being Mario Brothers going horizontal and I had to like go 3D, I lost all, like I can't play Bond. I can't play first person shooters. My mind doesn't work like that. I just get killed immediately. Like when people are aiming guns and actually shooting at people, I'm just in the corner, like shooting a corner. I'm not <laughs> good at it. I tell you what I'm good at is the VR ones that they've had me do because I can actually point the gun and mm -hmm. aim it with my face. But when I'm actually aiming with a controller, I'm bad. That has nothing to do with um, the punishment. I mean, teaser, I can but I, I play a mean cut the rope. Let oh, me tell you. Um, like but but yeah, great games. Dude. What did you think, my friend? It looks great. It's a cool teaser. I mean, it just kind of gets you in the mood for Punisher. I mean, this is going to be a dark story. The dude lost his entire family, and he's out for revenge. I mean, yeah, what's that going to look it. like? Bernthal always plays the crazy guy. Every time he shows up, yeah. whether it's like Sicario, The Walking Dead, uh, every time you see him, you're like, what's Bernthal going to do? You know, Wolf of Wall Street, he's always a crazy, kooky guy. Great he actor. Just, Very but, versatile. But then, like, yeah, you hear he's about really him, he's, you know, he's got, like, wife and three kids. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a family guy. But on screen, he's vicious. So I can't wait to see what he's going to do with this role. I'm excited for this. I, I, we need a release date. I know. I, I, I was going to say, we still don't present. know when. You it's think it'll be like a, an actual it, Christmas I, present? Well, not like on Christmas Day, but I think it's going to come out in December. Okay. It's going to be a Christmas present. Yeah. That's a long time from now. It is, but I mean, we just Jeff had Defenders. Jeff is thinking November. November early, okay. But I'm thinking December. I'm thinking it's Christmas present. November's not too far off because we have had, what, a full trailer like and a couple 1st. teasers, yes. so it December could be November. 1st would be awesome. December yeah, December 1st is kind of what I... That's what I. That's what my ginger mother of dragon the, vibes we're are thinking. The holiday vibes. Because October is a big month for Netflix because you have Mindhunter, yeah, yeah. David Fincher's new show, and Stranger Things. And Stranger Things. So yeah. maybe November will be their flagship. Uh, maybe that'll be the flagship. Maybe. Yeah. Boom. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm what's excited. next? I know we're all going to be tuning in. Also, principal photography has begun in London on Amazon's fantasy drama *Good Omens*, starring Michael Sheen and yeah. David Tennant, based on the guys. novel Look by him. Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. <laughs> I. This is just. 
absolutely perfection. These are two of my favorite actors. I am so excited. They're describing the show. Equal parts humor and horror, fantasy and drama. Good Omens takes place in 2018 when the apocalypse is near and final judgment is set to descend upon humanity. Well, Neil Gaiman's got a theme, doesn't he? Just a little. Uh, yeah. Apocalypse, gods, you know, dog, real dogmatic kind of stuff. Yeah. I will say this picture, one is hysterical. Uh, two looks like a Halloween costume if you and your buddies were going as right? steam, steampunk rush. Yeah, because the, the way it's shot, Canada. like this isn't like how that it's is look Getty on... Lee. That is Getty Lee right there. Yeah. It looks exactly like yeah. Getty Lee. Got the tight jeans on. Yes. And... I am so attracted to David Tennant like this, and I'm already so attracted to David Tennant at all times. Weird, so but I'll be he, tuning he, in. He's a badass Scotsman right there. <laughs> that is a badass Scotsman right there. I mean, he was uh, he, David Tennant is the man. He's both these actors. Uh, yes. Michael Sheen's been on Masters so of Sex for the last like five or six years, and yeah. I'm glad that he's. Finally got another vehicle I to met chew him at the into. Comedy store one time. Pretty, oh, good. Is he a nice guy? Dude, yeah, yeah. Good. Michael Sheen or Ter David Tennant? Michael Sheen. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, Tennant's been nice. killing it lately. I mean, Jessica Jones, Broadchurch. So I'm so happy to see these two guys teamed up. And this is like a dark comedy. This is right up my alley. Yeah. It's gonna be on. B it's a BBC, Amazon like co-production kind of thing. Right. So I think it's gonna air on BBC as well as. Uh, Amazon. I gotta say, because like, yeah. I enjoyed American Gods. I know that a lot of people said, oh, they ran out of budget for an actual last episode, and that's the reason it ended it as was it was. a solid first like, season, though. Okay, it was yeah. solid. It was good. It, it, it had me in the sense of the first season of Preacher, sort of, kind of, what am I watching? What mm -hmm. is this kind of situation? Sure. I, with this kind of talent, and I understand that Good Omens is a little bit way different of a book, but also just a darker comedy. Yeah. Emma, Emma Fife kind of yelled at me on text yesterday that it's from, like, the funniest British writer ever to live, which... Oh, wow. Awesome. That's great. Um, and I love British comedy. So I'm looking way more forward to this, based solely off this picture, than I was anything from American Gods. American Gods obviously takes itself Agreed. seriously because it's a, it's a dark, gritty drama. Yeah. This, you can tell these guys are just, yeah. look at Michael Sheen's little smirk Yeah, like this face. looks like a great yeah. set to be on. Like, I want to hang out with these guys as those guys. I just hope they come out and they do some Rush songs somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> in the limelight. All right, Grace. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so that's going to be a six-part series. It's going to be on Amazon in 2019, so don't hold your breath. 2019? 2019, and then Jesus. it's going to air on BBC Two after the Amazon debut. What, we get it before BBC? Whoa! Take that's that, you! <laughs> take, take that, UK! Take that! Whoa, Thank you for all your best. great television over the years, but take that! They always get the shows first. Can you handle that? Sorry, sorry. We, <laughs> sorry, we, we, yeah. we, we, we love you out there. Of course. Love you guys. We Thanks you. for watching yeah, us. Thanks for watching. Yeah, appreciate British that. Breakdown. Great, great British breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> Please don't leave. All right. All right. So Grace. moving right along, <laughs> we're going to talk about what we missed on Sunday because we were all super busy not drinking alcohol and watching the Emmys. Um, so we're going to start off with Vice Principals. What do so you guys think? Yesterday. I don't watch the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes, Grace, here comes Josh's drum solo. Did you see how Bow. confident I was? I was like, what are you, like, just throwing you? Did you see the you? meme someone made of it. Grace looking at me after she realized I didn't oh watch Oh my beat. God, I have gotten like, like a hundred tweets about that. Yeah, it's, 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 great. it's a great meme. Yeah. It's a great meme. It's, great, yeah. it's not a great face, but I appreciate, I appreciate the memes. Face. It's, it's very, it's like, <laughs> I do a lot of weird things with my face. <laughs> I'm sorry for the way I am. <laughs> so, Joshy, what did you think of Vice Principals? Well, Grace, <laughs> I got to say, yesterday somebody yelled at me on Instagram, how could you not review the Vice Principals premiere? I got to be honest with how you. How dare you? I totally forgot that it was coming on TV. <laughs> you mean with we so little lot. television? How did you know, lose track, I know. weirdo? Um, I, need, I need a little member, Mary, like by me going, member, Vice member Principals? Vice Principals? Oh, yeah. Yes, Vice Principals is tonight, member. I'll member. Never. You need that little paper clip from like old school yes. Microsoft Word. I need that paper I mean, a live-in paperclip guy, and then I can click out of him, and then he reappears, and he's like, hey, hey, man, like, not only can you format this document, but Vice Principals is on tonight. I'm like, great, thanks, man. So Vice Principals back. They, they shot this show, the whole thing, in a row. So this is they, this is has been in the can for a while, but they split it into two seasons, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Picks up perfectly right where it left off. There's no... There's no real jump in anything. Shea Wiggum is absolutely perfect uh, as the wife to or the husband to Busy Phillips mm -hmm. and Danny McBride. And the, the, I mean, the breakout star of the show is Walton Goggins. There is there. It, this is one of the darkest comedies, silliest dark comedies I've ever seen. Because he just plays a vice principal who's a crazy asshole, and now Walton <laughs> Goggins is the principal of a school, and he is like nine shades of insane. So this show makes you it. it it takes you back to a high school because we had a vice principal in my high school that was insane. We also just watched American sure. Vandal that sort of made me want to go back to high school. This show <laughs> has, there's, there's such, all of these shows with these guys, the dick and, and, you know, like all, they all have 
uh, i.e. Re observe and report, all have ridiculous violence. When you don't think violence should happen, right? <laughs> Guys are getting shot in what should be a comedy. It, it, it doesn't doesn't really make sense, but that's always been McBride's thing. I mean, Kenny Powers, Eastbound and Down, didn't make a ton of sense, and I think that was the point of it. Mm -hmm. Same with this show. There is really, there's a storyline, and there there is a plot. <laughs> There is, there is, unlike a lot of shows that we watch, i.e. Preacher, or Fear oh. the Walking Dead, or even The Walking Dead at this point, there is a plot and a storyline. So, I'm excited to see how this ends, I know they're going to wrap it up, and I know it's going to be in a very violent, weird, and hysterical way. Mm -hmm. Vice Principals, welcome back. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta tune in, because everything I hear about it, I'm super sold. Yes. Because it totally sounds you like my it. brand of, like, really off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yes. keep, yeah, so I gotta watch it. Okay. All right, so next, uh, a show that I do know that you watch, right? Right? Give yes. me a wink. Uh, the Deuce on HBO with James Franco and James Franco <laughs> and also James, James Franco, Franco. James Franco and Harry Bush is in bo and saggy boobs. Welcome <laughs> to the Deuce. Basically every prominent American character actor they could find is in this yes. show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, hold on a second. First of all, welcome to the casting session. Can you show us your boobs? Oh, they're weird looking. Welcome to the show. <laughs> But I like that though. I mean, I like that. I mean, not to be I like, 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 not, like the, 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 the hookers in New York at that point weren't yeah. porn stars. I mean, the like women they, are now. Look, they look normal. They look like porn stars, you know, with fake everything. They look normal. Yes, like normal people. Yes, which is nice to see. Um, but this sometimes this is one dark, weird, creepy show. It really. Well, is. I like it because I'm learning a lot about prostitution, which is Good. very interesting. I don't really know much about the trade. I haven't you don't dabbled in it per se. So it's nice to learn a bit, a little bit more about prostitution. It's also Build nice that to spoiler learn. Spoiler alert for David's also, prostitution yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, it's Cody, also nice to learn it. a little bit more about the, the porn industry back in the day. Because I think we take it for <laughs> granted nowadays. You can just go online and watch anything that's in high definition perfectly for you. Not that I recommend you do that if you're a young person. But, you know, uh, if, that's, if that's your thing, um, you know, you can, you, can, you can go online and watch whatever you want. But back then, you couldn't do that. Like, they, there's this whole explanation there in the movie theater about, like, why they don't show certain shots and penetration because you can't because the cops will come in and bust it up. So mm -hmm. we're seeing the early development of the porn industry in New York City. So this is a very educational show. Clearly, yeah. You're going a little too far there. Took no, too not much, at all. I, I, I was enthralled Josh, by that whole speech. Josh, what do you think speech. about that? Are you, are you learning? I'm just, I, I just want to apologize for taking the porn industry for, for granted. Thank you, yeah. Dave, for pointing that out. I, <laughs> when I watch this, I keep thinking to myself that, you know, in the 70s, how gritty and terrible New York was, right? Yeah. I mean, there's these terrible hotels. Everything looks awful. Mm -hmm. And now you can't get, you couldn't get one of those hotel rooms for under three grand a month, yeah. right, right? In, in, in Manhattan. But... The grimy nature of it is very, very interesting to me. And this whole trade of like prostitutes getting arrested, cops sort of being in on it, weird porn shop dealers, everybody having some sort of yeah. interest in the adult trade, whether it's the, the hotel people, the mobsters, the waitresses, the, the hookers themselves making mm -hmm. weird porn movies in like a house in Long Island. There is an unbelievably weird, perfect thing about this show. Yeah. I don't, in spite of James Franco. Really, in spite of James Franco, even though he's like the main thing in this, because he's just so hard to watch sometimes. He's winning. He's he's. He, this show is great. This show is really <laughs> oh, good. good. I'm glad you're liking it. Yeah, I, I, I really am. It's dark. It's creepy. It's weird. It doesn't make you feel good. Just like most Simon shows, you know. Mm. Um, it it is very. True. It's a hard show to watch. I'm curious to see what Maggie Gyllenhaal's character is going to do. It looks like she's enjoying or learning Making more about porn. the porn trade. And she's like, she's fascinated. She's asking questions. She's like, oh, what's this? Like, why is the lighting yeah. like this? Why is this happening? Like, why do you yeah. shoot this way? Like, what are we doing here? Like, she's fascinated by it. So that's interesting. Yeah. There you go. Mag All right. Maggie Gyllenhaal, the deuce. All right, Grace, what's next? On, on, on that note, yeah. So now <laughs> we're going to move right along to some non-porn things. <laughs> oh, uh, Ray, Ray Donovan. Donovan. Okay. I mean, There's a lot of sex in Ray there's Donovan. There's a lot of sex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's I've there's said there's this. We, we always <laughs> mention it on High Lows. Uh, we always. I, I, I've been watching it since day one. I know you kind of gave up on it. Mm -hmm. I'll just say briefly about Ray Donovan. Where is this show going to end? How is this going to end? Yeah. Is it going to end like Sopranos, where it just goes black? Somebody's got to kill somebody important. The show is trending towards something to a very, very depressing end of a very, very depressing show. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I even like it anymore, but I just mm. keep watching it mostly because Liev Schreiber is... I, I'm learning a lot about grunt acting from Liev Schreiber. <laughs> I, I honestly, I, I'm... When I'm... I'm going to start practicing being Liev Schreiber and see if I have any friends after about four days. <laughs> because he is such Do an it. asshole and everybody's like... It's okay. It's Ray. Like I love Ray. Ray's the man. It's kind of like you. Okay, but you're, we talk love to you me. so much. Start okay. talking to me. Hey, Joshua. How was your uh, yesterday? Good, huh? Well, that's nice. Your beard looks trim. Do you want to be friends? I gotta go. Okay. And then he just leaves the scene. Like I, again, 
I don't know why he was nominated for an Emmy. I love I love Leo Schreiber. His voice right. is incredible. He not, narrates all those HBO shows. I don't understand the attraction of the Ray Donovan guy anymore. The first couple seasons, he was a little well, chubby. Well, I, I think it, it's kind yeah, of an yeah, older, I, I don't I hate saying old, but I think after Tony Soprano, this whole big cascade of male anti-heroes just came out of the woodwork. All these dudes that are brooding, they don't talk much, they cheat on their wives, yeah. but yet to when guys watch the show, like, Oh, he's not that bad. He's just conflicted. He, but he's he's not a good guy. No, like you don't want to aspire to be Ray Donovan because you'll just you'll you drink yourself Correct. into death. Yeah, um, it's a lot of but stuff. he's very good at doing that. Um, and I think it's, that's why after three or four seasons, I was like, that's enough. Like I, I get it. Yeah. yeah, he broods, he cheats. I get it. I get it. Like I'm I don't need you. to see any more of that. Totally yeah. with you. Agreed. You know? Okay. What's yeah. next, Grace? Yeah, on a on a lighter note, uh, episodes. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm on a very small minority watching this show, and like the last season was two years ago, so it was hard for people to get back into it. But mm. if if I can preach enough about BoJack Horseman being an unbelievably true and funny look inside Hollywood, same as episodes. It is. It it, it nails Hollywood on the head, and people. My I made my brother watch the first season. He's like, Hollywood's not like that. I was like, dude. Hollywood is like that. <laughs> it, it may be even more right. so. And this show, and Matt LeBlanc is incredible as Matt LeBlanc. It's sort of like what James Vanderbeek has tried to do six different mm -hmm. times. Right. But Matt LeBlanc <laughs> knocks it out of the park. I can't recommend episodes highly enough. And it's one of the easiest binges ever. It is so quick. All the episodes just fly by. It's great. Episodes. Are you caught up? No, I don't David watch it. Oh, great. Watch. Okay. It's not British. Oh, David, that's right. I see. Yeah. I, saw, I saw the pilot. I saw the pilot. If there was a Venn diagram, right? If there was a, one of those big... <laughs> that's what those things are called, right? With the circles. Josh and I don't think it's Josh and I... It's like two circles and they like yeah. intersect. I looked at Cody because he's the most recent college graduate I know. So <laughs> Venn I mean, diagram, This is right? obviously a perfect mm -hmm. Venn... I don't know perfect what you guys Venn are talking right about. Here, right? Josh so, started at Penn State. I started at Central Michigan University. Correct. Mm -hmm. Two MAC, mm -hmm. Big Ten schools, yep. Midwest kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Now, <laughs> my phone is ringing in my pocket. Something happened. So... <laughs> David's over here with his crazy British shows that are all relatively good. They're all like dark crime dramas that make you want to kill yourself. <laughs> I'm over here with tons right. of half hour comedies, lovely things, <laughs> spoofs, farces, that kind of stuff. And then David and I meet in the middle with these like heady, huge dramas. And then out here is Westworld where we're going to have a fist fight <laughs> one of these days. So if you look at the Venn diagram, we've hit in the middle on some shows like The Nick. Uh, Banshee, Fargo, right? Fargo uh, Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Yeah. We've hit these, these, and then out here are these argument shows where I bring them up and he's like, "Hey, fuck that show." I'm not watching that. <laughs> so, Dave, you gotta watch BoJack Horseman. Yes, I would love to actually put together a Venn diagram <laughs> yeah, of the shows enough. that we have watched mm -hmm. and the shows that we haven't watched, and put that. Well, you know what? I'll throw it on my Instagram. We'll make a little graphic of it. When I come back from my wedding, we'll make that project happen. I got too much on my plate right now to do it right now. That would be. I, I would like to see the study of David and Josh's tastes. Yes. Me too. Yeah. And we're at all. And we're, like we're, sorry, we can, we can go back. We'll go way back. Yeah. See what happened. <laughs> Something happened there that Josh and I just we we had a connection, but then there's something that's missing. There's a piece that's missing. We're yeah. gonna find it. We'll find we're it. Do it. We'll discover. That's what TV talks for. All right, we got one more show, and then we're gonna go to the <laughs> Great British Breakdown. Yeah. So before our favorite group, uh, Great British Breakdown, we're gonna talk the Strain finale. I was the only one that has kept watching it. I know there's like that's four people. That's absolutely on true. Okay, I've watched every episode of that show, and I can't tell you enough how disappointed I am in myself, um, <laughs> my time management. Um, I, I honestly, I looked at it, the strain, sort of like I know that I, I'm a, I have a fear of commitment, but I'm getting married, mm -hmm. I'm putting a ring on it, so I decided, you know what, as a as a as a show of faith and commitment, I'm going to keep watching the strain. <laughs> okay, the strain is that girlfriend that. You don't know why you ever dated, how you're still following her on social media. When you see a picture of her, you get nauseously ill about your life at that point. And yet you keep clicking on her pictures. Keep going like, maybe she wasn't that bad. Eh, it's not that bad. And then a kid, a 12-year-old kid lights a nuke. And you're like, this is the dumbest show that has gotten four seasons in the history of television. Without a doubt. the the One of the worst, if not worst, shows I've ever watched every episode all the way through. And I watched Tyrant on FX as well. Okay? I watched that show. I, I'm, you know what, as like a punishment, I'm like, why didn't I just binge Gotham? I should have just watched Gotham or <laughs> Lucifer. I should have watched those shows as opposed you to The Strain. You would have enjoyed Lucifer more. As opposed to The Strain. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I feel like Paul Bettany in Da Vinci Code. I want to like flog myself. Like, The Strain, The Strain, The Strain. I, I did it and I apologize to my brain, to all the people out there that told me I was an idiot. You were right. The show ended terribly with that kid who was hands down, and I'm sorry, I hope that one day that you're, you're like, I don't want your parents coming after me, but that kid is the hands down worst kid in the history of TV. And there has been a lot of terrible He's kids. He's worse than Carl? The, worse than, way worse than Carl. Oh, worse, no. than the, worse than the kid, the son in Homeland. Worse than the daughter in Homeland. He is the worst kid in the history. This 
This is like you have a starting. I can't complain about the show enough. I'm sorry. We're, I'm going off on a tangent. Let's move on. It's like having I was. A, I was so in it. I was like, yeah, Josh, what? what? Imagine you have a. You. This is a sports reference. Imagine you have a starting quarterback on a football team, right? And everybody's like, we paid totally. him thirty million dollars. He is the future of the franchise. And after four seasons, he has more picks than touchdowns. You're like, you know what we're gonna do? Start in season five. He is our day one starter. You're like, why do we keep doing this to the fans and the people? It's vampires with weird snaky things that come out of their mouth, and now they are dominating the world. What? <laughs> All because some idiot let a guy out of a box in New York. It is the dumbest show. And I can't believe Corey Stoll did this show. I cannot believe that we were I tricked I into Corey this. Stoll. This was Guillermo del Toro. He said, that's Guillermo del Toro. That's how you say it in a Pittsburgh accent. Oh, that's a Pittsburgh that's accent. Like, like, that's like, Guillermo <laughs> del Toro. That's his show in that. That's Guillermo del Toro? <laughs> the guy is a genius, and he did this show? He wasn't really behind. I mean, he signed off on it. Right. Yeah, he's right. getting a paycheck. Guillermo del Toro's making this new movie that's going to be up for all these Oscars. Of that, course it yeah, is, because he's, he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're all allowed one miss. And Guillermo, I'm looking at you. This was your miss. Let's move on. What do you think, Grace? <laughs> yeah. Sorry for yelling at the camera. For a We're going to move on to David's great British breakdown. Ah, that was a good pirate accent. It's a great British breakdown with my boy, David, Sir David Griffin, the black beard of the pirates. Oh my God, black beard. That's perfect. Look at your beard. It's so dark it's and lovely. So black. You look like a glorious man there. I don't know how to take that one. Okay, folks, <laughs> we're going to move on to the Great British Breakdown. It is a beautiful Tuesday. A sassy or sexy or sassy. sensual? Sassy. Sassy, 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 sassy I mean, Tuesday. all of the above. A pirate Tuesday. Uh, watch, <laughs> yeah, it was a pirate. If you want to watch a pirate show, watch Black Sails. It's awesome. It is. Uh, check that out. So, Great British Breakdown. Again, I reach out to my, my, my lovely crew. I'm like, guys, I got a show for you. I think you might like it. There's a new show that just premiered on Channel 4. I believe it premiered on Sunday in, in, in the UK. Was it Channel 4? They had the watermark on it. It was the Channel whole time. 4, yeah. Uh, wow, that was a smart. That was a, being sarcastic. Okay, well, <laughs> it's called <laughs> Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. Now, Philip K. Dick is a man respond. Look at those handsome people, right? Look at that. You got Rob Stark himself, Ow! the king of the north, and you have the lovely My Crush Holiday. Yeah, I was catcalling her, not Fancy him. time Granger right there. She's just so lovely. So, Philip K. Dick is responsible for a lot of important books, uh, short stories, and movies. So Blade Runner was based off Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? That was him. Uh, the Minority Report, uh, The Adjustment Bureau, all those kind of different uh, shows that are like mind-melding uh, psychedelic stories. He did. Okay. So he's dead now. May he rest in peace. But uh, his stories live on in this 10-part anthology series. It's a lot like Black Mirror. So every episode is a self-contained story. So we have here, we watched episode one, The Hoodmaker, that uh, I enjoyed. Okay. I don't know. We'll see what the other, uh, my other compa compatriots think. But <laughs> it's really cool. So it's just, I won't spoil anything because it's, it's going to come out on Amazon for people in the States. Um, but it's about these telepaths. These telepaths are kind of uh, like teeps. Teeps, and they're minorities, and they're being taken advantage of, and you know, abused, and uh, they, they're, they're trying to fight back. And you have this cop, Rob Stark, who joins up with the teep, <laughs> uh, Holiday the Granger, real name. It's, no, it's Richard, Richard, Madden, <laughs> Richard Madden, Richard Madden, Richard Madden, Richard Madden, AKA Rob uh, Stark. Yeah, Richard Madden, Holiday <laughs> Granger, team up. You have a teep, that's a person who's a telepath, and you have Ro Rob Stark there, who's normal, and uh, they're teaming up together to try to figure out who's making these, the, who's a hood maker. That's that's the premise. I don't want to spoil any more than that. Sure. So, what did you think about this dysto dystopian, dark, yellowish, a lot of yellow tinting in this mm -hmm. show? Uh, what did you think about this uh, first episode? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Mm -hmm. um, like post-apocalyptic, like slaves and telepaths was like a little heavy-handed for uh, a Tuesday morning. Uh, for myself, but you know what? I thought I my biggest problem with this was actually the relationship between the two of them because I just felt like <clears throat> maybe spoilers. It just kind of like escalated too quickly for mm -hmm. me, and too I didn't, quickly. I didn't buy it. Out yeah. of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and then it's I like, didn't buy oh, it, and then hey. like it coming full circle, and then she's like, "What?" And he's like, ah. "And I was like, well, yeah. Like, what did you think? Like, so it's tough because it, it, it was just it's a one off. You get one episode, yes. then it's done. Yeah, so, it's like yeah. Black Mirror. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was at times it was a little hard to follow. I thought it was beautifully shot. I thought she was really the standout for me. Mm. Um, when it started, when the opening credits started, and I saw pictures of robots, <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna turn it off. I wasn't even gonna watch. I was gonna come in here and yell at you, but I said, you know what? I, I love my buddy David. He's an amazing dude, and I, I'm going to support him in his British ventures. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to watch Electric Dreams. David. No robots. No robots. No robots. <clears throat> there were telepeats or teeps. Whatever teeps. Something, yeah. Okay. 
what 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 was this? What was <laughs> Have you ever seen Blade Runner? Have any of those? Yeah, movies? I've seen Blade Runner. Well, it's, it the same, like, it's the same guy. It looked I mean, like Blade Runner. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, it looked like, like Blade Runner. Look like look like uh, Blade Runner. It was cool. Uh, I, I don't understand why the telepaths need those scars because it would be because they, they were look awesome. On. Oh, obviously. they were experimented on. Yeah, oh, I mean, we I see, that. That. You're, see, you guys see. <clears throat> I the thought thing. they were birthmarks. <laughs> the thing is, <clears throat> when you watch a serious drama, you have to pay attention. This is not episodes. This is not the Big Bang Theory. You can't just like zone whoa, out and watch whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> How don't dare you accuse me of watching the Big Bang Theory? You electric dreaming son you of a focus. beast thing! You got to be focused when you're watching this show. This is important television, people. Jesus, this well, show is. That's what happened. It's like we're watching so much it's like i'm like sitting here like putting on my mascara like totally yeah, watching okay. thank god i thought it was a birthmark I, I, see, I thought this was a like a series and this was the first one i was like oh where do they go from here and now they're gonna get out of this city this had this the the sex scene between them was legitimately like hey josh have you ever tried baseball here's a bat oh you're in the major leagues now like you don't <laughs> that do, i know he looks like like he does but that telepath. I know she looks like she does. Yeah, right. Like they're but hot. They didn't people. even show it though. I was, there was like, no why have a hookup like that all. and then have them not even like? Give and then they woke something. up. I was like, come on. Yeah, not it was. Show it was the man ass. David, cool idea. I mean, what? Cool idea. And I'm looking forward. Thank God it's an anthology because I'm looking forward to see what the, these other. It ones will be are. on Amazon. Yeah. So it's it's a big production team. Ronald D. Moore, uh, Brian Cranston is. Uh, they're all producing the okay. show. So it's, it's a big show. I'm looking forward to the anthology. <clears throat> if, if we're going for this one, uh, they're 0 for one in the anthology. Okay. In my opinion. Really Episode two shot. is called Impossible Planet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that little teaser. It's a as little long as it's not called The Robot Adventure, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm, oh, there's, a, there's one We're episode changing it to The Robot Human Adventure. Is. Oh, That's probably robots. Yeah. That's a robot episode. Cody, <laughs> meet me at Buffalo Wild Wings for the for the robot it, the episode. I'm done. All right, David, thank you. For, honestly, though, thank you. I, I, I love when I get emails from you with British shows because I'm very interested. Well, I, I have another one for you guys next week. Oh, nice. Grace is just scratching Grace the is just I'm not at all breaking out in time. <laughs> like, 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 you gotta realize, like, totally when, when I sent the email, I was like, Grace, don't throw your computer. I have one more show for you to watch. Like, and, just hear, like, and I'm literally no! just like at home, like, like this <laughs> much shit out. to do. And yeah. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's great. Thank should we do Dave. some Twitter questions, Grace? What yeah. Do you think? I actually, I think that that's a yes. It's okay. going to be a yes for me, dog. Cool, cool. Um, yes for me. We're going to go from our friend. Somebody's like replying here, but I really like this idea from our friend Grizzly Ten Bear. Transform, and I'm gonna do part of your question because it's a little lengthy. Transform a sitcom into a drama, but you have to keep the cast. Ooh, um, some shows probably, are almost I, some, some shows are almost already there. Like Shameless is like yeah, that's a drama. That's like a drama. Oh sure. Even well, though yeah, I'd, I'd go Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> because those guys are already doing some dark dark stuff. Mm -hmm. It could be really funny to see them with like a drama that has stakes. Right, like right, that. right. Yeah, yeah. Rick and Morty. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I know it's animated. That'd be good. Done. Obviously, done. Seinfeld. It'd be cool to see those actors do like drama. a serious right. drama. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm so obsessed with Broad City. I'm going to have to go with that because I Ooh. think that'd be fun mm -hmm. to see that's them try to Parks and Rec. Yeah. If it was like like really oh, serious. That's like, a great one. We need to like work for, we need to like build parks for our kids yes. and, you know, like something like that. Little Sebastian is yeah. the beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. I like that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> great question. I enjoy yeah. that. Nice. All right. Let's do a. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me? Here, tis a pick of the day. Here, okay. If you could get cut picking your nose by any celebrity, who would it be? Oh. I choose Jennifer Lawrence because I got a big crush on her, and I hope when I'm picking my nose, she's like, what you doing? And then we strike up a conversation and fall in love. Although I'm getting married in 10 days, so no worries. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I would, <laughs> great. I, that was such a wealth. I was like, in it with you, yeah. yeah. I would maybe I would say like I mean first of all I don't pick my nose. <laughs> um, I would say maybe like Ellen DeGeneres because then we could like make a joke about it and she Perfect. wouldn't judge me and well then I'd become like viral because she'd make a video about it. David, See, for me it's, si it's Seinfeld. Oh Seinfeld, because Seinfeld has a whole episode like where he's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a woman over here like no, it was a scratch. It <laughs> was know, a scratch. I'm always yeah. scratching my nose and yes. I have these big long nails, so I always look yeah, really suspect. Like, I'm very. <laughs> it's a full pick. Yeah, it's a full pick. Yeah. It's a scratch. It was a scratch. Um, scratch pick. All good. Yeah. Let's get out of here. What do you think? Yeah, I just have one thing to say really quickly. Oh. It's Adam's birthday today. <gasps> Happy birthday, Adam! Spoiler! Happy birthday, Adam! <laughs> I didn't even know. I had no Can't idea. Can't hide from me, Adam. My goodness. Arr. I don't know. If you, guys have, you guys have seen Cody and Adam, Happy obviously, birthday. before. But a uh, special happy birthday to Adam. He does so much for this show. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. So thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> 
And Cody, You're you can welcome. go f yourself. Um, oh, oh. Kidding. Love you, bud. Poor All Cody. right, let's get out of here. David Griffin, where can the good people find you on the internet? Find me on Twitter, Instagram at Griffin D E. Grace Hancock. And you guys can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. I have a huge, huge announcement that uh, I'm going to be posting on my social medias tomorrow. Uh, so be aware of that. Thank you guys as always for watching Collider TV Talk. We'll be back tomorrow live, 11 a.m. PST. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey everybody, Josh McCuga here. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Collider TV Talk. Wanna watch more episodes? Click there, it's a, an interactive link. Or for more Collider content, click down there. Subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends. Get an airplane, drive it by that says Collider. I'm not telling you to buy an airplane, just do whatever you want as long as you're watching Collider videos.